who you've got. John Sidney McCain III comes from a long legacy of service to country. His grandfather was an admiral, his father was an admiral. His family has served in every conflict since America's founding. It dates back all the way to General George Washington's staff. Senator McCain was born in August of 1936 at the Naval Air Station in the U.S.-controlled Panama Canal Zone, where his father was stationed. My dad had just kind of intense admiration and respect for his dad. He was a very small man. I mean, he was 5'4", maybe, but his presence was stunning. McCain's father was a submariner. His grandfather, a sailor who pioneered naval aviation strategy on aircraft carriers. As a boy, he admits a mix of pride in the family legacy and resentment that his life's course seemed preordained. There was never any other consideration other than he would go to the Naval Academy, which made him a little bit rebellious. When he was 15, his parents sent him to Episcopal High School, a private boarding school in Alexandria, Virginia. He had been to a lot of schools as they moved around from base to base, and it's pretty easy to know that this guy probably was quite a bit more worldly than the rest of us. Bruce Reinhardt was on the football team and wrestling squad with McCain, and remembers that even as a teenager, McCain was a nonconformist who pushed back against rules. The school had a new boy system, it was called the rat system, not unlike what you'd find at the Naval Academy. McCain says he was considered the worst rat because he frequently picked fights with his fellow students, challenged school authorities, and ignored the school's regulations. Hence, he earned the nickname Punk. And I think he enjoyed that nickname. He, on the one hand, could have taken an easy path through life. He was the son of an admiral, he was the grandson of an admiral, but he clearly wanted to make his own mark. After four years in the Naval Academy and advanced flight training, McCain was eager to add, as he calls it, his own paragraph to the family legacy with a combat tour in Vietnam. The call to duty is what they're all about, and so he not only wanted to go, he asked to go. At age 31, and a married father father of three, John McCain joined the squadron on the USS Forrestal as an A-4 pilot, and it was on the flight deck in late July of 1967 that he had his first real brush with death. Dad was on deck. His plane was going to be the next one to launch. A power surge triggered the accidental launch of a rocket across the ship's flight deck, striking a fuel tank and igniting a massive fire on a ship loaded with bombs. They were sitting ducks there, and they were trying to offload these bombs into the water and and, uh, trying to get the fire out. So many men died that day, but he rolled off the nose of the aircraft into the fire and ran. He always says how he's the luckiest guy he knows. I've always felt he's the luckiest and unluckiest guy. After surviving the forest all, McCain could have gone home. Instead, he volunteered for another tour on the USS Oriskany, a carrier that had suffered its own major shipboard fire just a year earlier. To him, it wasn't about being a pilot in a war. It was about serving his country. And he signed up to do that, and he was going to do it. Three months later, McCain's plane was shot down in a bombing mission. Then I found myself falling toward the middle of a small lake in the city of Hanoi with two broken arms, a broken leg, and an angry crowd waiting to greet me. He'd broken his arms and leg on ejection. His captors broke his shoulder with smashing blows from a rifle butt, then dumped him in an empty cell at the infamous Hanoi Hilton. We knew he had been captured, so we knew he was alive. As we learned later, you know, he came very close to death a couple of times. He was given medical treatment only after his captors learned his father was an admiral. How is your food? It's not like Paris. He was a potential propaganda piece because of my grandfather, and they were trying to exploit that to their advantage. His jailers offered to grant him early release and a chance to escape his suffering. He said, I'm not leaving. Code of conduct. You go, go home in the order of, of your shoot down. McCain would later learn that the day he was to be sent home was the day his father was to be promoted commander of the entire Pacific Fleet. And they thought they would secure a public relations coup by releasing him back to the States. He could have taken advantage of that, gotten out early. He stayed in line, did his duty, did the right thing. How many people, given the choice, would stay true to their code, true to their brothers, 
who were there in the North Vietnamese prison and refuse to go home. I said that must have been a really hard decision and as it turned out for my dad it was not a hard decision. His punishment for rejecting early release was four days of beatings. They worked me over harder than they ever had before. Cracking his ribs, breaking his teeth and re-breaking his arm. Ernest Hemingway has a famous line in Old Man in the Sea, man can be destroyed but not defeated. And every time I think of that I think of John because of his strong and relentless will to live, to serve, to fight for what he believes in. His first two years as a POW, McCain was placed in solitary confinement. It's a test of strength, of human dignity. By the time he joined his fellow POWs, he weighed just over 100 pounds, his broken arms still useless. They put me in a cell with two other Americans. I couldn't even feed myself. They did it for me, those men saved my life. The experience, McCain has said, changed him from a rebel without a cause to a maverick on a mission. You're powerless. You're at the mercy of your captor. And the only thing you hold on to is your ability to be faithful to your country. After five and a half years, McCain was sent home in March of 1973. His time as a POW, he says, made him appreciate that America's freedom was an honor and that with honor comes obligation. He retired from the Navy in 1981 and won a seat in Congress the following year. He couldn't serve in the military anymore, so he went into politics. As a member of the House and then the Senate, he's been a champion of veterans. Someone who always had the backs of the men and women of the U.S. military, no matter what. And when President Bill Clinton called for normalizing relations with Vietnam, McCain became a leader in the charge. One of the two key people, John Kerry, was the other one. He's made 22 trips to Vietnam. We had to chase down every lead with respect to the potential that an American was still being held. Um, there is something really striking about a man who spent five and a half years in a prisoner of war camp, having then 22 times gone back. We visited the Hanoi Hilton, and I will never forget, ever, the emotion of being shown the cell in which he spent a fair amount of time. He now is someone who's also viewed by the Vietnamese as their best advocate in Washington. Family and colleagues will tell you he's still very much the rebel. He has a contrarian streak a mile wide. I'm sure you've heard the fiery McCain as an adjective often used to describe dad. But I said, you know, John, those guards who watched over you for over five years in North Vietnam are still going to group sessions all these years later trying to recover. <laughs> the same courage that John showed in Vietnam, he shows in Congress almost every week. I remember one time I was getting some grief from local editorial boards and people because I was going after earmarks and egregious spending, and I was on a flight with him, and he came back to my seat, and he put his finger right in my chest, and I thought, oh, I'm really in for it now, and he said, don't give up. You're doing the right thing. That's meant more to me over the years than anything. Senator McCain has been a role model for those of us who are younger senators about how to be your own man. When he talks, the room goes quiet. People always know that something important is going to be said. What's so unusual about John McCain is that combination of willingness to be a maverick and real concern to be effective to make a difference and that's a very rare combination. If McCain got his straight speaking style from his mother. An absolute dynamo. She's 105 now and is still going strong. He got his tireless work ethic from his dad. He's a tremendous worker. He always wants to be prepared and ready. How he does it physically I don't know. We saw interns just begging. I, I got to take a break because they couldn't keep up with him. John came back to the Senate right after the diagnosis of brain cancer against the advice of his doctors. Tough diagnosis to get, but an even tougher guy. He's concerned with doing his duty. He works like a sailor, he fights like a sailor, he swears like a sailor, and he is one of the greatest patriots I've ever met. He recognizes the need for America to be a voice for those who don't have much of a voice. Somebody asked him, what should the purpose of American foreign policy be? And he said, I can't think of a better answer to that than the Declaration of Independence. Every one of us on Earth is created equal, and we've got the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He has always put this country first in everything. And now, please welcome the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Amy Gutman. 
evening, everyone.